Welcome to Business Lines State of the Economy podcast where you will find insight analysis and the story behind the numbers. Hello listeners uh, welcome to Business Lines State of the Economy podcast. Today we are very glad to have with us Mr. PV Subramaniam who is one of the very sane voices in personal finance amid all the noise and clutter that you hear on social media. Uh, Subra has he is known to people runs a blog called subramani.com which has over a million visitors where he posts blogs on a wide variety of subjects related to investing. So going into Subra's background he's worn many many hats through this over two decade career. In the first 17 years of his life he was an auditor he chartered accountant he was a corporate finance advisor he was an advisor to many big names in india on their wealth creation journey and after that actually he is sort of quit corporate jobs etc to so educate and share his knowledge with the public at large so he's authored three best selling books retire rich you can be rich too and a prescription for doctors today um, we hope to hear from him on um, how to be a successful equity investor you may feel the subject is a, a, a bit old and everybody has been talking about it but i can assure you that the point of view that supra gives you will be quite unique and different from the rest so to start with supra you've been investing in the stock market from the 80s and the 90s and you must have seen over four market cycles right so would you say investing then was far more difficult than it is now uh actually no because uh, that time data was difficult to get but it was good quality data which means mm. we just got the balance sheets of companies but you have to do your own calculations you have to calculate the ratios and when you are calculating ratios you would think should i take gross assets or net assets all these mm. doubts would come then you go and pick up your uh, basics right. of finance book and see how the calculation <laughs> should be done so it would take 3 days to calculate all the ratios and uh, arrive at the uh, you know fund flow but in the 80s uh, cash flow statement was not given only pnl and balance sheet was given so it forced us to look at the notes on accounts uh, today when i speak to some of the analysts they don't even know that the company law depreciation and the income tax depreciation be two different figures not that we right. were here to you know do a phd in finance but since, since we didn't know we were forced to do it so whether it was a small balance sheet like supreme industries or a more complicated one like reliance reliance was right. complicated in the 90s also a lot of thinking lot of talking to companies and saying why this price and all that then luckily or unluckily uh, so many experts were not available today it's very easy to get a report and get bias there was a um, uh, research report on supreme it was because we made it other than that we got no access to any other research report it was little easy and little difficult today if i want the ratios it's available to me in a button so some of those screens are available and uh, so today some things are easier but definitely we were not inundated with uh, too much of junk right Yeah I think all the information you got then was primary information it was not filtered information coming to you through somebody else so you could Yeah we had to it. talk to the promoters we had to yeah. talk to the CFO we had to get the balance sheet and we learned a lot of things also you know arthi on my way i learned that when you talk to the the promoter when you're trying to buy his share or sell his share he would talk very differently uh but i as a lawyer i went to the supreme court three four times with different promoters i realized that a guy under stress speaks the truth much better go to him as an investor he will say oh everything is hunky dory but when he is being prosecuted under excise duty for creating some fake document <laughs> you realize where is esg was i have always said what book should you read for equity research anthropology to zoology anything uh-huh. that you read. i mean anything that you read you read how the mauryas behaved how the guptas behaved everything you know why a person in north india behaves differently from a person in south india when you read geography when you see how people behave then you realize oh this is how this company will behave so it's very fascinating journey so talking of books and where to learn investing now in india it's become quite a fad to quote american icons like you say that uh, you keep quoting warren buffett and peter lynch and then howard marks can indian investors really apply american lessons and don't we have a lot of role models in india also who created a lot of wealth for investors uh see uh, in india the people who have created wealth have been in the and been in the public space are fund managers Right. like say uh, narain prashant jain anand rajeshan do those kind of people you can't compare them to buffett simply because buffett is a businessman the only person you can compare buffett to is say deepak parekh or mukesh ambani 
Right. You can go over a company, take it private, keep it there, fund it, and then put another 500 crores and do a new IPO, right? Take it private and then do a new IPO. And also understand that in India, uh, even for fund managers, building a portfolio of, say, 15,000 crores in SBI, if it has been built by ICICI, it is built over two years. It cannot right. be built for a short period of time. But for them to buy 12,500 crores of SBI takes time, selling also right. takes time. So they are severely limited. So comparing a fund manager to a business owner is unfair. I'm sure if you create a 25-year track record, uh, both Prashant and Naren would be at least in the top five in the world. Right. I mean, so that is the kind of performance they have given. Uh, the problem is they don't write about it. Right. But you have known many of these people personally over the years, right? You knew Parag Bhai, you knew uh, Rakesh Junjunwala, you knew Prashant Jain and Shukran Narin. So what are some of the things that you've learned about investing in the Indian context? What are some of the qualities you need to be a successful investor in India? Uh, what are the qualities to, in, in a successful investor is actually a book, not just a question. Because, <laughs> so I would start with saying being uh, curious to know how this company makes money. You know, it's easy to say, oh, I will never use Zomato. So Zomato is not a good buy. <laughs> okay. If there is uh, Italy and Pongal available outside my house, maybe 400 meters outside my house, and I want to eat it at uh, 10 o'clock, I just walk there and buy uh, and eat for 40 rupees. For my daughter, she orders it on Zomato. She will get it at 70 rupees. First of all, it's at a premium plus 40 rupees delivery charges. So 110. So I would think it's, oh my God, 40 rupees Pongal, I'm getting it at 110. But she just says it's convenient, right? So there are, you have to understand why some businesses work right. without being biased. I would not, I'm not a Zomato consumer. But I might be a Zomato investor, right? So you have to you have to keep on being curious about the business model, saying why this works, why it won't work. So you have to be curious. You have to be willing to be very skeptical. You yeah. suspect everything. So when a promoter says something, you are skeptical. You are saying, oh, I know this is happening, but is it really translating into money? Right. Obviously, you're going to say, yeah, yeah, we know, we know so and so, so and so. But you know yeah. how difficult it is to set up an airport, for example. You need 50 approvals. So does this company, look, look at Shapurji Palunji and Dubaj of Z, both very, very successful businessmen, very well, uh, doing very well in SL Propac, SL World and all that. And Shapurji Palunji, very renowned name. Both of them found their Waterloo in uh, infrastructure. It's not right. easy to be in infrastructure. So when a company goes from a project they know to a project that they do not know, you have to be careful. Then some companies, you're not very happy with their go corporate governance. But suddenly the children come and, you know, corporate governance is in place. For example, like Kajaria Ceramics. Uh, I never had very great uh, respect for them. Then suddenly the children came, they started advertising. And today it's a top company. Yeah. And it's done very well. Yeah. You never know where things can go right, where things right. can go wrong, whether the shares are being rigged, right? So all those things you have to be alert. So yes, right. being skeptical is useful. Speaking to some auditors is useful. From where you can get information, not right. just the printed books. From I'm now 50 kilometers away from Nariman Point. If I don't understand something, my friends say it happens. When you go and live in a village, it happens. Come to the city, we will tell you what happened. Some information right. you can get only there. You cannot sit in Kodaikanal and hope to get information. Sometimes when you have your ear to the ground, it has been Nariman point, not in uh, it doesn't. You Sound doesn't reach there. So, so the, probably, this tells me that actually stock picking requires a lot of work in terms of not only reading the balance sheets, then understanding I mean, trying to talk to the ecosystem of the company in terms of stakeholders, customers. But uh, many people today want shortcuts, right, Subra? So they think that the same process can be short-circuited and uh, simply by going on social media and following what, uh, um, say, Ra Rakesh Junjunwala bought or he, who he's no longer there, but uh, they still track his uh, wife. Uh, say, what Dolly Kanna bought or what Subra is saying on Twitter. They feel they can just follow that and make money. So what do you think of that? <laughs> I, I myself am not capable of uh, creating a portfolio today. I'm being very clear about it. But I have one advantage which others don't have. I have a full uh, database of uh, phone numbers, knowing whom to call when I have to buy something. I, I'll give you an example. Uh, DHFL, uh, the, the price yeah. was 1200 rupees. And one broker told me this is worth buying at 1200. I, I had no clue. 
So I called up another friend. He said, "Look, I am not tracking it, but I have a junior. Talk to him. He must have been some four or five rungs lower. Normally, these people are a little scared to talk, right? They don't know who is this person. They are not met me. So on the phone. So he said, 'Sir, twelve hundred is not right. One digit is extra in that price. <laughs> Either one should go off or zero should go off.' I said, 'What nonsense! What is this?' He said, 'Sir, read the notes and accounts.' And so then I realized what they were doing. So I didn't yeah. buy, and the share actually went down to one twenty. But you can do that only after you have done your research. You cannot just pick up the phone and say, "Tell me what to buy." That doesn't work. Right. You do your research and then final plunge. You see, because I am not meeting the promoters and all anymore. Uh, doing research to me is very important to meet the promoter. But uh, I don't think a young uh, reporter yeah. should meet the promoter because they will get overwhelmed by him. I, I, I always keep saying, experience cannot be taught. Yeah. So what I take away from this is that you may be buying a certain stock with a certain objective in mind. Like you may think of it as a trading bet or a long term bet. You may be thinking of a small allocation or a big one. So when you share something uh, on social media, then the person reading it doesn't know the context in which you are buying. Right. That is why you often give that disclaimer. I've seen like uh, this is what I have bought, but please don't follow me, kind of thing. I mean. I keep telling this to uh, people in my class. If you know the kind of losses I have made, you will stop following me. Right? <laughs> so, so it's important to know, and this is true for every big fund manager also. I mean, I was quite shocked when uh, Prashant bought uh, Yes Bank at eighty rupees. I never liked uh, Rana Kapoor as a promoter. So I never touched uh, Yes Bank. But uh, he bought uh, Prashant Jain bought Yes Bank, and uh, today's Yes Bank at ten twelve rupees may be a different buy. But at eighty rupees, it was not a good buy. I was quite surprised because I found Templeton, uh, HDFC, yeah. AMC, all of them had a stake in Yes Bank, and I never liked Yes Bank. So there are no theories which work. You have to take each theory and see what works. In fact, that is why I am against following American authors. So some of these things. So therefore, American companies made money. Uh, like for example, Coke <laughs> was asked to set up plants all over the world during a world war. and all that was funded by the military and after the war was over that was given free to co no nobody gets free plants all over the world to those things will never happen to a new company today so with yeah. all that is hidden when you say oh coke has made so much money for shareholders from here to there all this is being hidden very difficult to use the last 70 80 right. years or 100 years of american history and to think right. it will get uh, replicated in fact you can be sure it won't get replicated Before. You've uh, interacted and managed when he given advice to a lot of wealthy people in India. So, how do the rich teach their children to invest? I think that is the real test, right? Yeah, and it works both ways. You know, there are friends of mine who say, "Thank you very much. My son now knows what I have, how I invest, and all that." So it is very useful. And there are some who say, "Arey, yar, my son knows how much I have, so you know, so he wants to spend three uh, crores on his wedding." my budget was only 80 lakhs he is spending so much on his wedding so it cuts both ways if you give information to your children you have to know how responsible your children will be and how much information you want to give second i think when you have a 3 year old 2 year old you start investing in the kids name and you start giving that quarterly statement showing say this money is for you and you keep on saying no this money is for you this is for your education so when the kid says i want to buy something you say can i remove money from there and the kid says no 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 that money is my money you shouldn't remove from there you take it from somewhere else so you realize you know compounding like for example i used to sit with my daughter show her all the dolls some would be very well worn out i used to tell her all dolls have a price but one which you have used you have derived value this is value investing right so all shares have a price but if you have earned well out of it it is you derived the value out of that purchase you have to teach value investing later on you have to do value buying now right you have to right. say why going to the wholesale market helps how going to the wholesale market does not help if you want to buy one bulb indians have a terrible habit of complaining that our schools don't teach our mm. schools are not expected to teach because 50 children in the class each one is financially different you know and also the terrible thing that we don't teach girls how to build lego toys is for boys girls will get barbie dolls and uh, purses you know so purses means she is going shopping to spend money girls have to be told how to build a portfolio Right, everything has to be taught at home. Why are we abdicating? Why are we thinking that if I pay fifty thousand rupees fees, teacher has to do everything? Mm -hmm. 
so you have to teach you have to teach the children and i think it's very important that you tell children about your failures not everything can be taught ultimately they have to go into their lives and do yeah. it but you can draw rules saying what you can do what you can't do how to judge a business all those things some of things you can teach some of things they have to you know academically learn and you know if your son wants to be a, a chartered accountant he has to be a chartered accountant your being a cost accountant doesn't help him so many investors have entered the markets in the last couple of years as it happens in every boom market and they think that options trading or intraday trading is a quick uh, way to make money and there are n number of webinars and other resources which are highly priced which are available to these people so but you are essentially a long term investor right so i mean how do you tell people that long term investing also works and options trading need not work for everybody yeah but arti uh, like i said experience can't be taught patience can't be taught right so when you see the benefits you say oh theek hai it's not so bad so by doing nothing maybe you call it laziness or whatever i have not lost money right so we, we all do that i mean i have shares bought in 1986 right so uh, and as i'm still holding <laughs> even today i saw chola results were superb out yeah, outstanding results yeah. So you say okay, ठीक है. The best company, best NVFC is already there in my portfolio. Why would I go and pick something else? I would do an FNO if I am very eager to make more money, right? So you cannot stop a twenty-five year old from falling for those things because today, if you were to take the top ten financial influencers on YouTube, uh, I don't think may, uh, many of them would be about thirty-five. which means they don't have experience i don't think portfolio sizing is a science which can be taught it's a science and an art ads which say in 2 hours i will solve all your financial problems yeah. how is it going to happen even let's say i talk to you for 2 hours can i yeah. solve all your financial no, problems definitely no right i keep That's saying true. we are like doctors we can recommend give them the prescription nobody can monitor all that right so uh, arti in fact i am worried about something worse yeah uh, once upon a time insider trading meant one guy talking to four people there is a limit to how much what you can do with four people five people buying and they were also scared they would okay your phone calls were not monitored so chances of being caught were less but today if a guy wants to rig up a share price let's call it unicorn pharma because there is no such company called unicorn pharma and he rigs up the unicorn pharma from 30 rupees to 1200 rupees because you to create echo chambers go and on reddit or facebook or all those places you go create create some handle saying i have been a pharma investor i know this you know writing and taking from 30 60 70 then the momentum takes it to 1200 yeah. typically they will say what was sebi doing was sebi can't even find out all this is happening it that's true. a tremendous amount of effort to know all this why, why did you lose money you lost money because of greed so yeah. if the promoter is also involved somewhere sebi might you know find out oh uh, the promoter has also sold and things like that what if i don't involve the promoter unicorn pharma does not know that supra Correct. has got together with 10 others and is creating one from indore one from bhopal one from chennai and everybody is talking up the share and is any regulator in any part yeah. of the world knows he can know after the event is over that data will be available for him to analyze but by the time these uh, stores have already exited the and, and if this transaction lasts 9 months you cannot keep on tracing somebody bought at 30 sold at 40 are you going to say give back that 10 rupees because with that he has repaid at the fc home loan how are you going to track all that money so the only protection you have is to control greed and have education investor education right. plus controlling greed all our media keep saying oh we need to do financial education financial education yes so the ability to learn to see what is happening and controlling your greed you can definitely do this i don't know why people are in such a hurry to earn so much money it doesn't happen and unfortunately most of our media does not talk about big failures so that's because the investor also doesn't talk about failure so no. as a journalist you don't get access to it. Oh, I'm saying, I'm saying, success has a bigger megaphone than failure. Definitely, definitely. So success is what you hear, and you. It's like saying, uh, Sachin Tendulkar played cricket and earned so much, so I will play cricket. They are outliers, basically. They are outliers. Irubai Ambani is an outlier. He studied only up to eighth standard and ran such a big empire. Empire. Will we stop our children at eighth standard and say, oh, now put up a petrol pump in? <laughs> 
we yes. we have to understand such copying is not possible therefore you cannot copy investors yes. also if i am a big investor and i have say 60 70 companies believe me i have made all my money in top 10 shares other right. 50 are mistakes right. but these 10 yeah. are such mega hits that it covers all the mis- other mistakes right. now if you pick up only my mistakes you can copy me and go wrong and i may have got the top 10 by luck so just because you are a fantastic ceo you may not make a fantastic businessman there you are taking decision on behalf of somebody else your That's salary right. somebody else's money is at risk when it comes to your own money you may not be able to take a risk and i think the best thing that an investor should do which nobody recommends is to maintain a notebook uh, today this is what i bought this is what i did this is uh, keep on writing right. because six months later you laugh you laugh at your own mistakes you 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 would have done i mean imagine march 2020 when covid yes. happened the most sensible thing to do was to sell but who made money the guys who bought the guys who sold are looking looking like idiots people to see 3 years 4 years 5 years in future is very difficult so in the market you know only one thing never take a very strong position on anything keep changing your mind as That's the numbers change very 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 important you know companies doing very badly and adani or ambani or somebody takes it and runs it well obviously like uh, i think cg power cg power was a disastrous company at 6 rupees murugappa got took it and it is 300 rupees you know there is a change of management but when there is a change of government we don't treat it as a change of money so maybe this manage this government comes and gives them a free hand they are able to do a better job and therefore the price has moved up. we don't have enough data and the ability to analyze data to see what is the impact of change in management on psu it's too big so to find out how much is luck how much is management skill how much is change of management it's a tremendous amount of skill so when you're building a your portfolio you need to do all this what is the kind of risk management and uh, insurance that investors must have i mean actually this is a good question because when uh, when we talk about insurance we generally think of medical insurance correct because death means nothing that if i die i don't have a problem if people correct. dependent on me have a problem and that's not something which people bother about too much especially wealthy people because they know that the bread butter some is taken care of for the next 100 years so that is not what is worrying them they I know one lady who needs three crores for her retirement. Very, and she has sixty-five crores, and she keeps asking, "Is this enough?" So I tell, and she <laughs> travels travels by auto rickshaw. I tell her every time you go out, if you buy an auto rickshaw, you will still not finish your money. <laughs> Some people are so scared, but I am looking at risk uh, insurance at a younger age also. Say a twenty-five year old, thirty-five year old. What is the risk? Risk is you could die young. that is a risk on people dependent on you that's right. a critical illness which could uh, lay you down by 10 years mm-hmm. which means you are not earning and somebody is spending money on you you are not spending because you are in coma you could lose your job and not be able to find another job so what is the insurance against this the insurance is qualification once you have good educational qualification chances are if one company closes down somebody else will pick you up you know like arthur anderson closed down but all the chartered accountants got picked up by price water house and ferguson and all those so oh, pick four just picked up so people were not unemployed so so that is one so making sure you know in husband and wife if the wife is a let's say she is a professor in iit and the husband is doing day trading you are really sure one income is surely That's going to come she is going to work that till 68 right. then she is going to have a pension so that is another type of insurance so education is insurance income flow is insurance right. medical insurance is required all these things help you one thing they help you making sure that in case there is a big drawdown in the market you are not forced to sell your equity portfolio that is the insurance that i am talking about when you uh, surround yourself with all these uh, kavacha kundalam mm-hmm. you are sure that in case of a drawdown you can say okay next 10 years expenses are lying in debt funds and bank deposits i don't have to worry i will look at it i i feel bad about it because it's a 30% fall i should put be putting more money into it but even if right. i don't put money the fact that i do not withdraw correct means that after 3 months 4 months 6 months whenever the market recovers i am in right. good uh, that kind of insurance is what i'm talking so about. basically but, asset allocation having something in emergency funds bank deposits and things like that right so, yes asset allocation but asset allocation is a very very misused word also 
because after a point there is no sense of making asset allocation for example uh, a ratan tata or an azim prem ji don't do asset allocation they are 99% in equity because yeah. their base itself is 50000 crores or 1 lakh crores uh, rti i remember i was when i was doing a lecture just before me uh, and i had done the lecture and i had said uh, asset allocation and all that and one guy uh, came after me he said i don't do asset allocation all my money is in equity so people are looking at me very accusingly and saying uh, you said asset allocation now he is saying uh, i don't think any asset allocation is required for any of you all those of you have 10000 crore net worth please put your hand up so please understand the context of asset okay. allocation not everybody needs asset allocation beyond the point you don't need asset allocation up to 3 crores 4 crores 5 crores you may need asset allocation similarly an 83 year old uh, who is spending 5 6 lakhs a year and who has got 10 crores just a need asset allocation all his assets could be in uh, equity it doesn't matter it could be all in debt it could all be in equity it doesn't really matter so asset allocation and i always talk of asset allocation for the family when is earning a very assured return like a, a iit professor mm-hmm. kind of a job where you will not lose your job or nothing great your mm-hmm. salary is steady line slowly going up Be, um, beating inflation but not some uh, 30 lakh bonus and all you will never get yes. you get a standard salary of 18 lakhs or 20 lakhs but it will, it's enough to run a family then you can take risk You say okay, that is there. That actually, that is his income is like debt income. That's right. right. Nothing can go wrong. It's like guilt. Mm-hmm. I won't even say debt income. It is guilt without empty and you know kind of. What <laughs> more do you don't know? So you say you say okay, I am earning three lakhs a month and I'm going to you know uh, do F and O, do the, all this because if I get a higher return grade, if I don't get, I know I have that to fall back on. So asset allocation for the family is very important. rather than asset allocation for the individual and after a particular figure asset allocation may not make sense in a, in a 10 year cycle market will fall 30% once uh, 5% regularly and 1% every day also it could fluctuate i know that so when there's a 30% fall i know that it will come up so i will remove from debt and put it in equity and for asset allocation look at your total portfolio this way also so asset allocation is about mindset about your family income about your own background your father made money in equity so you are comfortable with equity your father lost money in equity so you are scared of equity all this put together is your asset allocation not just some number so asset allocation be holistic when you look each person has a different asset allocation based on his or her own background all this combination is asset allocation Thank you so much, Subra. I think we've come to the end of our session. A lot of very insightful points you made, and I also had a lot of learning from this session. Thank you so much.